Even before the announcement of the new special counsel, a bunch of Democrats were declaring it was time to talk impeachment for President Trump. Watch. I rise today, Mr. Speaker, to call for the impeachment of the President of the United States of America. I think this is going to put us a little bit further on our way to what I've been calling for for so long, and that is impeachment. Thank you. Of course, the left has been demanding Trump's impeachment since before he became the president. I think it was the week he announced they started calling for it. <laughs> but now they think he really deserves it. Crystal Ball is a former Democratic congressional candidate and works at the New Leaders Council, a progressive organization. She says it's time to impeach Trump. Crystal Ball joins us tonight. Uh, Crystal, do you still think it's time, even after the appointment of this special counsel? Yeah, absolutely, which I welcome. I think it's a great move. I think it will help bring some clarity and give us a sense that we were actually going to get to the truth of what happened between Russia and our democracy and the president's campaign. But it doesn't change the things that the president has already done. And look, a couple things. You can absolutely think Dems have been hysterical from the beginning. You can think I that, do think that. Okay, that's fine. I, I knew that you did. Yes. You can think that this president has good intentions and still look at the facts here and say he is unfit for this office and is incapable of faithfully executing office. Those the are presidency. fairly subjective judgments, so subjective, and you can make a case for them. Sure. But they're so subjective that we don't typically take away the office of an elected leader on the basis of things that subjective. That would be known, I think, as a coup. Well, it's, right. So it's don't we wait subjective. for the evidence of a crime, or as the Constitution puts it, a high crime and misdemeanor, before we convict someone? Isn't that what justice is? Well, let's put Russia in a separate category in terms of the investigation that's going on there. We already know that this president kept Michael Flynn in office even after he knew he had been compromised by the Russians. We already know that he tried to obstruct justice and put pressure You've on been James Comey. been compromised by the Russians in what way? Well, in, in the way that Sally Yates talked about, that, she, that he was lying about the conversations that he'd had with the Russian ambassador. Okay, but, but how was he compromised? Because I, I don't, they I mean, I use think, that to blackmail him. I think the Justice Department, the FBI, didn't the FBI, I think Comey said this, looked into the substance of his conversations with Kislyak and decided it was you know, not such a big deal. It was the lying to Mike Pence it was, that made it's the, his boss mad. Well, it's the lying that compromised him because they could use that as blackmail. That's the whole idea there. So that's one piece. Another piece just is interested. What were they going to blackmail him to do exactly? Well, because he was lying, they could hold that over his head. And get him to do but what? But moving forward from that one, if you disagree <laughs> well, I don't know. One. You're making the allegation. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, here's People the, throw here's these things the around. He could be compromised like he's a Cold War spy no, or something. No, but because they know that he's they've caught him in a lie. So that's something you can hold over their and head and pressure him. them to do whatever. He was a top national security advisor. He had access to our most sensitive information. So that's an example where I don't think that you can say the president was faithfully executed. Do you think that Mike president. Flynn, whatever his faults, would have funneled national security information, American secrets, to the Russian government? I have no idea. I've never met Do you think he's Mike capable Flynn. of that? But I think it's a bad situation he ran to have an intelligence national agency security advisor for Barack Obama. lying about what he said and did with the Russians. So that's one example. Another example is what's come out reportedly about the president's conversations with the Russians in, his, in the Oval Office and the fact that Wait, he... just to be clear, you think that because Mike Flynn lied to the vice president, Trump should be impeached? I think that's one example that he kept him in office. Another example is requiring Jim Comey so to pledge so you know, an anybody, oath of loyalty. If you catch someone lying in your office and you don't fire him immediately, though he did actually fire him like two if days later. If that person is compromised by our adversary. But he did Russia. fire him in the end. So wouldn't that right. exculpate him? After it came to the public light, he left him in office for quite a while. So in addition to that, there's... I'm sorry, this, no offense. Now, we're, I'm a well, fan of yours, but this is this is a little crazy. You got to. I mean, a little bit. I mean, you're sorry, you're mad because he lied and Trump didn't fire him, but Trump actually did fire him. But Trump needs to be impeached because he didn't fire him fast enough. Because he left him in office. I'm I'm going to. I'm trying to go through. No, it. I know. I'm just trying to. I'm look. People throw this stuff around, and I just want to get specific about it because I don't know what some of it means. But mm -hmm. now I know what you're saying. Okay. So also, he revealed sensitive information to the Russians in the Oval Office. Now you can think that he again was good intention, that he didn't really what think about what he was doing. What was that sensitive information? about the laptop plot and the city and compromised our intelligence sharing with a very important do we ally. Know, do we know, that we know the nature of the information? Well, we know some nature of that information. Because the know, people and every person in the room who has spoken. That who's... could have been an important clue for Russia. Okay? okay. Again, you don't have to believe this is part of a sinister plot. No, no, no. I'm not even, I'm not believing, look, I'm not even suggesting 
a sinister plot because I'm not a Democrat. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what the allegation is. Mm -hmm. So nobody who is actually in the room who has spoken has said that Trump, however impolitic he can be, and he can mm -hmm. be for sure, mm -hmm. but gave actual classified information to the Russians. No one who was actually physically present has said that. So why do we think this happened? Well, we think that happened because we have multiple news organizations reporting that he gave up an important piece of information about the city where this intelligence came from. And now you have Israel, you have other allies saying, we're not so sure that we want to share intelligence with you, which makes our people less Israel safe. has said that? Other allies have said that report. Really? Which ones? European allies, they weren't specific, but that is the news report. Okay. So I'm just saying, look, all of this may be true, and I, I wouldn't pat, put it past the president for sure to say something he shouldn't say. He does mm -hmm. that a lot. But you're talking about impeaching a, a democratically elected president, removing him from office Correct. in a trial, convicting him of right. a crime on the basis of no actual evidence. Like you have a Washington Post piece, which may be true, mm -hmm. but at this stage we don't have that evidence, but you, you want to impeach the, him anyway. And then you have the latest memos regarding James Comey and the pressure that was put on him and in terms of the investigation with Michael Flynn. And look, Tucker, let's keep in Why mind, would that you're, be an you're impeachable talking about offense? how serious this impeachment would be, and you're absolutely right. But we should also talk about how serious the office of the presidency is. This is not some VP of marketing that we got to give him a shot. No, but I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not making the case. This person is I'm not making unfit for the case. We don't have to wait at all because we have things called elections mm -hmm. where the voters get to decide. Not the That's Center a for long American Progress. Well, you know what? <laughs> I know we grow impatient in this internet age, but the truth is, but unless you also, want to undo the democracy you claim to defend, no, no, you no. got to slow down with this stuff well, and say and we're going to like pull your leader out of office because we look, just don't like his fundamentally, style. Fundamentally, this is ultimately a political question, right? Republicans control everything, but I should say it's not only Democrats who are talking impe impeachment. Justin Mush also came out and said that. I if say this these every night on this show. True, just because some Republican or a bunch of Republicans it's or every John Republican McCain in the U.S. I don't care. I don't care what your party idea is. I want to know what the facts are. I want right. to know what's reasonable and true. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's pretty over so the top to say, call for impeachment with so no actual say, evidence of a crime. That's so all I'm let's saying. Let's say that everything that's been reported is true, that he really did try to pressure Comey, would then you think that it, it was an impeachable event? If, was, he tried, if it could be shown that this or any other president tried to commit obstruction of justice, that is without question an impeachable offense, and, and it, ought to, be, it that, ought to be pursued. Do you think what's no matter been who reported about pressure on Comey with regards to Michael Flynn, do you think that that constitutes obstruction of justice? Well, it prima facie doesn't, because it was to the top law enforcement officer at the FBI. Mm -hmm. And so presumably, if he thought it constituted obstruction of justice, he would have reported it to the Justice Department as required by law, and he didn't. So, like, I'm just saying, you can criticize Trump, but to call for his removal from office is a really big deal, and I think we're throwing it around a little cavalierly. So you don't, think, so you don't think that would be obstruction of justice? I'm saying a hard break. Loyalty. I'm, I'm afraid we're totally out of time. But you can watch <laughs> tomorrow. I'll tell you more what I think. Crystal, thank you. Thanks.